Hello everyone, how are you all? Welcome back to the class guys. I hope you all are doing really great. And now we will start our paper number two guys. Now as per our approach and if you have not seen my approach video guys, I would request you all to see the video on how to approach paper number two. There you will understand what should be the right mindset, what should be the right sequence of covering this paper number two guys. So as per that sequence, as per that approach, we, will, we are starting with unit number one. That is cell biology and genetics, the most important and fundamental unit of this paper number two guys. So what all is mentioned in this particular part as per the UPSC syllabus, we are seeing that they want us to know about cell, genetic material, chromosome, mutation, and various other aspects. We have divided all this into nine parts and these nine parts will be covered in seven to eight lectures. Every line of the syllabus will be taken up. So we will start with this cell structure, function and cell cycle guys. The most important and fundamental part of, of this particular unit. Cell structure, its functions and cell cycle. So what all we are going to see, first I'll tell you what all we are going to see in this particular unit or in this particular lecture, sorry, in this particular lecture, lecture number one, what all we are going to study. Let us let us see the heading only, right? So first we will try to understand who discovered cell. So we will try to understand cell discovery and cell theories, various cell theories, right? This will be our first part. Over here we will focus upon the scientist guys. The only focus area will be scientists. Next, we will try to understand that what are various types of cells we have. You will understand the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. What are they? Don't worry about it. We will pick it up each by e one by one. We will be seeing everything about it. After that, we will be seeing the area of our interest that is cell. Basically, plant cell we will be seeing. So, you can say cell. Over here, we are seeing the components of cell, components and functions of the components. Under this component part, we will be seeing different components like cell wall, like cell membrane, like nucleus and different cell organelles like mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, ribosome, lysosome, everything we will be seeing guys. Our focus area would be what is its structure and what is its function. Both the things will be answered by this part. And in the last, we'll be trying to understand how the cell divide and what is cell cycle. This part will be covering your mitosis and meiosis. We will seeing everything in this particular lecture that is lecture number one guys. Now if you will notice or if you will uh, analyze the PYQs, you will, uh, you will see that they are basically focusing upon, I will also show you that what is cell, what are the different components, explain any one of these components in detail, they are asking about any one of this component or they are asking about this mitosis or meiosis process, various stages of mitosis, various stages of meiosis. Don't worry about it guys, just sit back and relax. What I've told you in the approach video is don't consider yourself a non-science student or science student, bio student or non-bio student. Don't think like that. Again, I am saying that you just want to study it to be IPS, IES, IFS, not to be a biologist, right? Just, just sit back, relax. By relax means don't think about anything else right now. Just be with me. And after this lecture, you will be in a position to answer everything guys related to this particular thing. I promise you. All right, guys. Let's start with <coughs> this particular cell. Cell, guys. So first we will understand cell discovery, right? <clears throat> so I'll take you back in time and I'll take you in the year of 1665, guys. In 1665, there was a man called Robert Hooke. What he did, he did one experiment. He took out the bark of a tree. We call it cork, right? He observed this cork under cork under his instrument. At that time, he developed an instrument that is a microscope, right? Under this microscope, he observed this cork and he observed what a honeycomb-like structure, like this, like this. I'll show you in the 
uh, figure also ppt also don't worry about this but like this he observed some structure honeycomb like structure now robert hook used to be a very good artist too so what he used to do is whatever he used to observe in that particular instrument he used to capture it or he used to draw it in his book that is a micro graphia and he used to write it over there draw it over there and from this book only we try we have understood that this cell is being discovered by a robert hook guys but whatever the structure of the cell he was or whatever the structure of the cork he was observing under that microscope he could only observe the lining or this outer cover of the cells he could not see any organelles under it why because he was seeing the dead cell because bark of the tree if you'll see it is made up of dead cell guys so there was no organelles he was able to see i'll show you check out this previous previous year questions also pause the video and you will realize that all they were all what they are asking about is this only after completing the videos try to solve the pys cues so this like this was the instrument he made now this was the time of 1665 guys now you can understand what was happening in 1665 in europe and what was happening in india if you can compare what was going on in india mughal era was going on who was the ruler if you can connect with this and really you, if you can think fast then you are on the right path guys guys you are on the right path in 1665 there was a rule of aurangzeb was going on right okay come back over here and this type of structure he was able to see so what he was able to see was only cell wall i'll tell you what cell wall is what is it is made up of everything we will discuss about cell wall but he was able to see only cell wall he could not see anything see he was able to see only this dark spots so he was basically observing a dead cell he draw in he draw uh, draw in this uh, which book micrographia robert hook but later on in 1665 not in 1665 but in that period only in 17 centuries only uh, there was one more scientist that is antony van leuven hook av leuven hook you can say or you can remember it by leuven hook just try to understand right now he was also improving upon the microscopic capabilities of the less capabilities so that we can observe more and he was able to do it also he was the first person to observe a living cell and he observed various kinds of living cell of both plants and animals and he described and he gave a detailed analysis of a cell at that point of time so during that time you have to remember about robert hook its micrographia first time cell discovery was done by him though it was a dead cell but after that in his contemporary his contemporary uh, it is av leven hook gave the description of this living cell that living cell contains a lot of organelles and later in 1830s come to the timeline ahead of it in 1830s you will see robert brown discovered a dense particle in the middle of the cell that is a nucleus don't worry about it right now just understand that they have introduced this like robert brown have find this nucleus part likewise if you'll go ahead in the timeline the capabilities of uh, the scientific capability of this microscope increase and in 18 uh somewhat around uh, 1840s or 1850s electron microscope was also invented and a detailed analysis very detailed analysis of this cell happened and now what we can study is because of this scientific discoveries only nobody is going to ask you about the discovery of cell but it will be helpful for you to write it in the introduction part very short thing we have understood right now about three scientists or two important scientists we have tried to understand we will remember their name that is robert hook and antony van leuven hook just see the spelling in the ppt itself right 
you know about the discoveries now this micrographia keep these certain keywords into your mind guys so that automatically now the story you know everybody knows story but people will forget this over the period of time <clears throat> right robert brown we will study again when we'll be studying nucleus we'll be talking about him also that is robert brown later on in 1800s right now we are talking about 1600s to 1700 over here like 1665 to be specific because this is written in sixth class ncrt also seven, uh, ninth class ncrt guys 1665 robert hook discovered the cell and what what was his discovery all about a cock tissue which is a dead cell but antony when uh, van lewin hawk observed a lot of living cells of animals and plants and he gave the detailed view of that what is inside that particular cell now while we are going ahead different scientists are emerging and in 1838 and 1839 one important cell theory was given we have to understand that what is this cell theory and who has given this again name of the scientists are important to you now in 1838-39 what was happening was there were two scientists one is mj Schleden and other one is Schwann. Now these two scientists, their discipline was completely different. They were at different places, observing different things. For example, the Schleden was basically a biologist, botanist. Botanist means he was observing plants and plant cell. Whereas this Schwann was a zoologist in his discipline and he was ob observing obviously animals and animal cells. Now these two people in 1838-39 combined their theories or they gave their theories independently that either plant cell or animal cell they look different but they are made up of fundamentally and physio physiologically they are made up of only one thing that is cell. They told that cell is a functional and biological unit of life. So first thing they told that either plant cell or animal cell they are made up of the similar either animal or plant they are made up of a similar thing that is of cell. On a cellular level they are same but on a physiological level when we see them they are different things. Right so they are superficially uh, superficial at the outer side but the inner side of it, inner uh, things they are made up of same thing that is of cell and next thing they told you about is a cell is a functional and biological unit of life means they understood that this cell is capable of everything this cell is capable of life this cell is capable of everything it can digest it can absorb it can breathe right so these two things were given by this MJ Schleiden and Sean and this is basically what you will write in cell theory. But one important thing they could not answer was how this cell is being divided, how this division is taking place. So here come our third scientist that is, just let me see the name, Rudolf Virchow. See over here MG Schleiden, MJ Schleiden, T. Schwann and Rudolf Virchow. Just see them, right? So this Rudolf Virchow was able to answer the theory and he has modified this cell theory which is given by M.J. Schleden and T. Schwann. No, now what they were not able to answer the that how this cell is being divided. Like what is forming the cell? Now this was answered by Robert Virchow. He told that cell is formed by the pre-existing cell. Simple line he has told that cell is formed by the pre-existing cell and in his language he told this ominous cellula as cellula. That what does it, this mean? This cell is formed by a pre-existing cell, nothing else. He gave this theory of cell lineage theory. Lineage means a cell is formed by a previous cell or a pre-existing cell. Now guys, 
I have not included a whole theory about it. Only specific points which you have to cover. You have seen about Robert Hook. Now you can write about Robert Hook that in 1665 in his book Micrographia, he recorded about this cock tissue, uh, <coughs> cock tissue of uh, like honeycomb like structure and he called it a cell. Or you can call it a cellula in his language. In his book, he has written a cellula. And from there, the discovery of cell happened, but it is of a dead cell. A. V. Leeuwenhoek, which was his contemporary, was working on similar, like observing the cell. And he observed with his like uh, modified uh, microscopes, he observed different uh, living cells of both plants and animals. Robert Brown in 1800s, or to be specific, in 1830, found a nucleus, called it as a nucleus. We will study it later on. Then, when you will, or when you will write about this cell theory, cell theory is nothing but they have devised that everything, either animal or plant cell, are made up of cell. Or either animal or plants are made up of cell at the fundamental level. Now, cell is a functional and biological unit of life. Now, cell is capable of everything. Self care, uh, like uh, cell is a independent unit which is capable of life. Now, but these M J Sridhar and T Shwan were not able to answer that how this cell is being divided or what is the division of cell. This Robert Virchow came in picture and he told that a cell is formed by a pre-existing cell, nothing else. That is omnis cellula as cellula. That is cell lineage theory. <clears throat> he gave it cell lineage theory. Now, guys, what you are seeing right now is, see, in ninth class, we don't study this ninth NCRT. If you'll open up, we don't study about this. Only they will be talking about Robert Hooke and Anthony Lowenhock. You will go about in 12th biology class. They will talk about these scientists. Now, nothing is a very technical. Nothing is scientific or you can say, uh, like, we have to think that, okay, uh, the science student will only be able to understand. Everybody, even a... Uh, Uneducated person will be able to understand what I'm trying to say. So don't think like that, that only science student will be able to understand it. <coughs> I hope till now we have understood something. All right, guys. Now just check out the this particular PPT. You will understand what all written over here. What all we have discussed, like Schleden, Schwann in 1839, Rudolf Vichero gave, uh, Virchow gave these theories. And what all we have discussed will be written over here. Just see it a little bit, guys. You will understand it. I know that. Now we will understand what is the difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes, right? Now cells are further, now these cells are of different types. One is a prokaryotes and a eukaryotes. What is the fundamental difference, guys? Whenever you will hear these words, you know, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, now certain things would be coming to your mind. Few students who know about it, who remember it, that prokaryotes and eukaryotes are basically something is not well defined over here. Prokaryotes means, over here it means that it does not have a well-defined nucleus. This even a ninth class student knows. It Prokaryotes are primitive kind of cells, primitive cells. Pr primitive means when they have original, when in the evolution of life, the first cell which would have come into existence would be a prokaryote. That means they are not well defined. That means their structure is not well defined. I'll show you. Their nucleus is like you have seen the cell like this, right? Nucleus is well defined. This is eukaryotes basically. They have well defined nucleus. Basic difference, fundamental difference. No well defined nucleus, well defined nucleus. Another difference is these prokaryote cells does not have the organelles, the cell organelles which they are having, they are not membrane bound. That means there is no outer cover of the organelles which are having in the cell, which I'll show you. Whereas in eukaryotes, you will understand that all the membrane, all the organelles which are inside the cells are membrane bound. That means they are well structured. That means in the evolution of life, these cells would have come first and over the period of millions of years, these eukaryotes have been formed. 
so understand in this way guys that the primitive the first kind of cell would have been a prokaryote and then over the period of millions of years on the time scale these these membranes would have been formed this nucleus would have been formed and it gave rise to the eukaryotes membrane bound organelles it doesn't have doesn't have membrane bound organelles it has membrane bound organelles right now what are the examples if i'll ask you if i'll ask you that what are the example of prokaryotes can you give me some examples of it so you have to add that the examples you will give is bacteria all the bacteria we are having are basically prokaryotics basically primitive in nature the blue green algae or you can call it a cyanobacteria is basically a prokaryote p p l o p p l o remember it guys because this is written in ncrt 12th class ncrt this is written p p l o what is p p l o pleuro pneumonia like organisms we will study it in a like ahead we will study in various uh, other unit don't worry about it or in this unit also we will uh, try to see them just remember the example p p l o bacteria b g a blue green blue green algae are the examples of prokaryotes but what about the eukaryotes i have told you that it has well defined nucleus it has well defined membrane so can you and i can come into this yes we can come also plants can come into this yes fungi yes i'll show you how these are divided i'll show you just understand the difference animals now these three difference are very best, basic in nature everybody should know about this what else you have to know into this is that over here in prokaryotes p and in eukaryotes e try to know try to find some uh, like example guys for like p means primitive so you should remember that prokaryote is primitive and eukaryotes are recent times modern times of like well defined nucleus well defined membrane bound organelles remember like this guys because right now you will understand but later you will get confused about p or e so p for primitive remember like this more difference is the dna in prokaryotes you know that the nucleus is not membrane bound and there is not a well defined nucleus that means nucleus would be like this that means genetic material would be distributed right so over here you will find a dna as a circular one circular dna you will find over here in, in prokaryotes whereas in eukaryotes you will find a linear linear dna what is dna what is rna everything will be studied just note down the point that here circular dna you will find but in eukaryotes you will find a linear dna like this what is the structure of dna what is rna everything will be studied guys don't worry about it again when we will be studying dna come back over here and then try to understand okay this difference we also have one more difference we also have over here is that the ratio of dna is to rna now over here in prokaryotes we have 1 is to 2 ratio whereas in eukaryotes we have the ratio of 1 is to 1 what is rna what is dna we will understand just note down the differences guys right now one more difference is over here is that rrna it is a type of rrna prokaryotes have 60 percent of rrna whereas this uh, eukaryotes the multicellular organisms or the higher organisms are having rrna is equal to 45 percent few more differences are there but i'll not tell you right now but when i'll be studying those like telling you telling you those points right you will come back and write those points when i'll be teaching you when we will gain some basics about it this right dna rna then i'll be telling you something about it don't worry about it right now these six differences you try to know also over here you will find the diagram 
that prokaryotes do not have well defined nucleus right over here can you see the nucleus this nucleus are just distributed like this but over here in eukaryotic cell you will find a well defined nucleus over here nuclear membrane you will find every <coughs> membrane and closed organelle you will find over here just try to see the difference simple differences are given now you try to understand one thing that everything in nature living things in nature are divided in some part right in five classes they have divided who has divided r whitaker he has classified classification has given by this scientist the scientist that is r whitaker he has divided all living things into five kingdoms i'll show you how first of all he has told that you know that the first cell which would have been came into existence is the primitive kind of that means prokaryotes that means they must be primitive no well defined nucleus no well defined membranes of organelles right no no you understand so this classification or this kingdom is known as monera this word has been given that monera is the kingdom and all prokaryotes will come under this monera so for example this bacteria this bg a blue green algae this pplos are part of basically what kingdom monera kingdom you all have studied this guys in ninth class you have studied this i'm just recollecting everything now over the period of time this uh, new this cell uh, started developing evolution happened right over the period of time the cell has become well developed <coughs> you carry on now under you carry out classification emerges that the cell is basically unicellular that organism is basically unicellular and it is having only one cell but this cell is well defined it has well defined nucleus it has well defined uh, cellular organelles right membrane organelles it has right so this unicellular means only one cellular but which is well defined is known as protista this is my another kingdom guys now you understand one is if i have a cell which is primitive kind of i call it monera if i have one cell and if i have well defined nucleus i'll call it protista what are the example of protista you will tell that the example of protista is basically diatoms protozoa and algae guys whatever i am teaching you na as it is just pick it up diatoms protozoa algae don't try to find out like if you will go deep into this that what are diatoms why it is called diatoms then you will be like like surely you will be gaining knowledge but it will be of no use nobody is going to ask you diatoms just in example you have to write in protista if they will ask they will not ask but in example as a example you have to know that diatoms come under protista protozoa comes under protista algae comes under protista what is the unique feature of them that they are unicellular and they have well defined nucleus this much you can write about them again see what all we have seen till now all living things all living things are being classified into five kingdoms by r whitaker r h whitaker and they are being divided into first i have a single cell prokaryotes prokaryotes that means i have a cell which is not prim which is primitive in nature not well defined nucleus i know the example now and i'll call it monera then i'll i have got over the period of time eukaryotes a well defined nucleus of i have got a unicellular organism you calling them protista examples now you know that diatoms will come under it try to see the images of it algae and what <clears throat> protozoa but what if i have many cells 
combined into it or over the period of time many cells would have engaged with each other and formed a system right so we call them multicellular so in eukaryotes we have unicellular organism and we have multicellular organisms you and i multicellular or unicellular you and i are multicellular right just wait a minute now under multicellular you will divide it on the basis of either they have having these cells are having cell wall or these cells are having no cell wall no cell wall if these are having no cell wall you will be calling them animalia third kingdom guys monera protista animalia but if you are having a cell wall if you are having a cell wall then also two classification come into picture that you are having a cell wall but you cannot do you cannot produce your food you cannot do photosynthesis you will be called as fungi as a kingdom your kingdom is fungi because you are a heterotroph because you cannot produce your own food and those who can produce their own food they are called autotrophs but over here plantae will come plantae so how many kingdom have been over there we have discussed monera protista animalia fungi and plantae our area of interest for this particular paper is plantae guys this all which i have discussed you will study it in gs3 science and tech part when you will be studying general biology all this will come again try to connect it over there my area of interest over here is plantae we will discuss plantae in detail we will discuss this plant cell in detail <clears throat> again i'll tell this you also try to pause the video and try to draw that if i have a cell but it is very primitive then it will be called as prokaryotes spelling just you check right um, mistake prokaryotes and this will be known as protista kingdom one protista kingdom known as oh sorry uh, monera don't get confused examples can you write you can write then if i have a um, like a well defined nucleus then it comes as a eukaryotes but i have only single cell unicellular i'll call this protista example can you write you will write it three examples i have told you under multicellular that i do not have one cell but i have multiple cell the multicellular under multicellular i have told you two classification that this particular multicellular organism has being a cell wall and not having a cell wall not having a cell wall will give me animalia and i am a part of what animalia only but in cell wall if i am capable of generating my own food that means i i can do photosynthesis then this is plantae and this will be our whole focus area for this particular paper number 2 and if i am not able to produce my own food i'll come under fungi what are the example of fungi i'll ask you have you heard about yeast mushroom and other example you can search directly searching out that what are the different examples of fungi fungi so all living beings in this planet on this planet are being divided into monera protista animalia fungi and plantae five kingdom classification given by whittaker this much you understand this classification guys difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes now you know <clears throat> now we will move forward and i'll show you that like this you can see different kingdoms now you will understand kingdom of protista now you will get it now you read any literature guys if you will find it protista monera i hope everything is clear now monera and frequently three example like like quickly three example should come to your mind bacteria blue green blue green algae pplos 
प्रोटिस्टा प्रोटोजोआ एलगे एंड डायटम्स फंजा मशरूम यीस्ट मोल्ड प्लांट्स वी हैव प्लांट्स वी विल डिस्कस दिस इज ऑल अबाउट प्लांट्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग एग्रीकल्चर राइट किंगडम ऑफ एनिमल्स इंसेक्ट्स क्विड और फाइव यू नो एनी मेमिलिया बर्ड्स एव्स राइट दिस ऑल यू विल अगेन रिकनेक्ट इन जीएस थ्री साइंस एंड टेक इन ग्रेट डिटेल आई विल लीव इट लाइक अप टू लाइक टिल दिस आई विल लीव इट राइट नाउ वी विल अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ इट just read this pro difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes you will get it now the cell size of prokaryotes are obviously smaller in size this is very important guys 0.2 to 2 micrometer whereas you will see the size is 10 to 100 micrometer in this very important this point is also important i missed it now we will understand this plant cell we have and this animal cell right and this animal cell and plant cell are basically differentiated between <coughs> on the basis of cell wall now there are different components you are seeing of a plant cell and animal cell some are having both are having some mutual components and some things are very peculiar to like only plant cell right now this vacuole cell wall and chloroplast are not are not present in animal cell so we will understand this mutual parts which are present in both the cells also these important chloroplast cell wall plastids as per the plant cell guys these components we will study in detail now this is a picture you can see that all we'll study it we'll study one by one every component we'll study its function we'll study so basically now we are going for the structure part of a cell of a plant cell basically and it will include all the things like plasma membrane cytoplasm ribosomes and new endoplasmic reticulum nucleus so what all are we going to see under components of a cell covering both animal and plant cell now the basic difference between animal cell and plant cell you will get a lot of difference but plant cell and animal cell the basic difference is the presence of cell wall i have also highlighted you in the earlier classification of whittaker also right we are going to see first cell wall then we are going to see cell membrane then we are going to see plastids we are going to see mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes <clears throat> lysosomes and nucleus guys so 1 2 3 4 i hope nothing is left 5 6 7 8 part we are going to see one by one in detail what all we can write if this cell wall if they ask you about write the write about the different components then in short you can write about three three lines about them right important lines what if they will ask you in the second part that explain in detail about mitochondria explain in detail about plastids what you can write about them so we will study now first we will study about cell wall so first we will understand the structure of every part of the cell plant cell and then we will put it into this part for example this then we will again see this whole plant cell right so first of all we will pick up this cell wall you can see this cell wall is present only in plant cell not in animal cell right let us study this cell wall guys now what all you have to know about a cell wall guys now you know very simple line that cell wall is a outermost layer of what plant cell right which is what rigid this cell wall is dead or live this is dead it is elastic or inelastic in nature it is inelastic in nature so you are seeing that it is rigid dead and inelastic guys so rigid dead inelastic and thick in nature right so this is the you can say adjective of this cell wall this much even in 9th 9th class ncert it is written 
Now what all extra we have to study, I will show you. But what does a cell wall does actually? Cell wall is basically protecting my plant cell. It is also acting as a barrier, right? So same function like protecting. It is giving shape to my cell. Also, it is helping in cell to cell. You can say interactions. So this is, is the basic introduction of this cell wall. I'll show you cell wall, right? Just wait. This is a cell wall. Don't see anywhere else guys right now. Just see that. <clears throat> Let us draw that in this way. We have this cell wall. Now guys, you have to understand that cell wall is made up of three things. First, middle lamella guys, middle lamella. This area is known as a middle lamella. These are terminologies. You don't go behind why middle lamella, why not something else? Don't go like that guys. Just middle lamella is the outermost part of the cell wall. Cell wall has a three part. Middle lamella, primary cell wall and secondary cell wall. In every plant you will find these two. These two are compulsory. Every plant you take middle lamella you will find and PCW you will find. Primary cell wall. But in secondary cell wall is present in basically dead cells, dead plant cells. So in some of the cases, secondary cell wall is present, right? So you are finding that you have a middle lamella by like this. You can show this. Let me show you like this, this middle lamella in black. You are seeing in this uh, red, red portion, which I'm trying to highlight. Then this primary cell wall. And then there is a secondary cell wall, guys. This is my secondary cell wall. In this diagram, it is not well represented. I'll show you again. Now, see like this, guys. This diagram is good. Here I have one cell. Here I have another cell. Here I have another cell. Like this cell are different cell we have. So in this cell, particular cell and this in particular cell, we have the outer layer, outermost layer as middle lamella. Now this middle lamella is the outermost part of this cell wall guys. Now you try to understand one thing that this middle lamella would have been formed when cell division was taking place. Right, cell would have been divided and this middle lamella is for this particular path also, this particular cell, for this particular cell also and this particular. So every, so that means that only multicellular organisms are having middle lamella because middle lam lamella are present like between the cells you are seeing, right? So the outermost part is middle lamella. For example, this middle lamella would be like this over here. Then you are seeing this primary cell wall, primary wall. And this inside you are seeing this secondary wall, secondary cell wall. And the innermost line is plasma membrane, which we will study in a different part. I mean, after this cell wall, we will be studying plasma membrane. This is my plasma membrane or you can also call it cell membrane. But it is not part of a cell wall. So cell wall has three parts. <clears throat> cell wall you understood that adjectives you know cell wall is a rigid thick in elastic dead in nature which help us to protect shape 
and also help us to uh, help us in cell to cell interactions right how cell to cell interaction takes place with the help of what i'll tell you now this cell wall because of two methods you will try to know as it is guys one is just wait now this cell wall is being formed by the method of what i was telling you two method was apposition as it is just you will remember the name nothing else you want to know about this apposition and into susceptions these two process because of these two process three layers of this cell wall is being formed that is middle lamella another one is a primary cell wall the inside one is secondary cell wall now you know that if you have to draw it like this outer one will be middle lamella inside one one more show one more layer that is primary cell wall and the inside one is secondary cell wall and the last one will be my cell membrane but cell membrane is is different part it is not part of cell wall you try to understand now it is being formed by the process of apposition and interception what are these how these happen this is not our area of interest guys all right let's see one by one what it is made up of middle lamella is made up of what right let us see this <clears throat> just wait middle lamella now guys middle lamella is made up of chain of pectins right and pectins is what pectins is a long chain of poly just wait galacturomic polygalacturonic acid polygalacturonic chain spelling just check it out guys polygalacturonic chain of pectin this pectins is a like compound which is with this middle lamella is made up of now this galacturonic chain is made up of what it is made up of alpha d galacturonic unit it this one poly means lot of galacturonic chain must be there right but this one part is one unit is alpha d galacturonic acid so over here which you are seeing this middle lamella this middle lamella which you are seeing it is a long chain of made up of long chain of pectic acid pectic acid basically poly galac polygalac turonic acid and in this polygalacturonic acid one unit is basically this you will remember alpha d galac again spelling galacturonic now guys you don't have to know that what is pectic acid what is polygalacturonic these are three words are enough for this middle lamella you can find ample amount of information in internet about middle lamella and you will get confused guys because nobody is asking specifically about middle lamella or write 250 words about middle lamella no the question will be about define two part question in the second part they might ask you about cell wall what are the what is the structure of cell wall and explain its function in structure of cell wall you will explain middle lamella you will tell that middle lamella is the outermost layer of the cell wall it is made up by the process of apposition and into susception and it is a long chain of pectic acid which is basically polygalacturonic acid and it has one unit as alpha d galacturonic just remember this these are new words for you it doesn't mean that you have to go to the genesis of it that where from where it has been introduced don't think like that think like that that this is enough for it 
now you come for primary wall right primary cell wall this you are seeing now this primary cell wall is made up of what cellulose now this cellulose you must have heard it is a polysaccharide see guys in your <clears throat> when you will be studying journal science in when you will be studying journal science right in what science and tech portion of gs3 for prelims and mains you will be studying one topic biomolecules under biomolecules you will be studying carbohydrate carbohydrates fats lipids proteins everything you will be studying under that under carbohydrates you will be studying that we have monosaccharide we have disaccharide and we have polysaccharide under polysaccharide you would be studying about cellulose very basic two three lines now this cellulose i am trying to connect that this is the cellulose we are talking about it is a polysaccharide chain of what glucose so what one unit it is a polysaccharide chain of what beta d glucose this is one unit and several units are joined together to forming this polysaccharide which is known as cellulose now this one of the this you are i am highlighting this primary wall this is made up of cellulose also this is made up of hemi cellulose or you can say pectins or you can say suberins now these are the compounds which are it these are made up of so very new uh, words you are finding right now suberins hemi cellulose pectins so what you need you need that you revise it multiple times you keep after this class you again write it down that what is it middle layer this primary wall is made up of what is this secondary wall is made up of right so primary wall is made up of cellulose polysaccharide chain it is glucose that is beta d glucose whereas middle lamella you know about <coughs> poly galactuuronic acid write again and again if you are not remembering because people are going to remember it alpha d galactuuronic over here alpha over here you will see beta dd same galact it is a glucose unit is a galactuuronic acid you, uh, this part right now this secondary wall i have told you this is black in color right and why it is shown black in color because it is present only where dead cell wall is present dead like dead uh, like in tracheids or scleral chyma this will be present not in every plant this will be seen right so over here it is made up of again cellulose and one more thing lignin cellulose and lignin this secondary cell wall is made up of now this secondary wall is further divided into s2 s1 s2 s3 we don't have to go this much deep guys this cell wall is further divided into now what i'm trying to say it this cell wall is also having that so much information so much content that we can talk at length about it but we don't need this guys we no need only specific few words so that we can write 250 words about this cell wall not only not this 250 words are also not required i'm telling you all right so about cell wall if they will ask you any time now cell wall you can write about the intro also cell wall will be asked in a second part question first will be define cell wall define plant what are the plant cell what is a plant cell what is the various component of plant cell and dif discuss cell wall in detail like this they will ask so intro you will write it is rigid dead thick its function is to protect give shape to the cell cell to cell transaction right cell to cell uh, it helps in cell to cell <clears throat> interactions how i'll tell you first we'll tell that how it happens how the cell interaction is happen so you will understand that over here happen what happens sometimes no here a pit like structure forms pit like structures form means sometimes this lamella middle lamella doesn't form well over here so here a gap will be formed like this i'll show you see this intracellular gaps you are seeing these are known as basically pits through this this is a other cell this is other cell right this is other cell through this the cytoplasm cytoplasm means the material inside it which we will discuss in detail cytoplasm will flow from here to here this is happening cell to cell inter interactions are taking place with the help of this pits and this is known as plasmodesmata this channel this tunnel you can say channel like structure is known as plasmodesmata 
and it has been where where their pit like structure is formed there is no formation of cell wall over here so because of this a cell to cell interaction is happening because of this cell wall <coughs> over here that this is identified plasmodesma that is written i hope you can understand guys and in this diagram when you will see na see how the marking is been done by this diagram over here they have shown that this is a middle lamella right they have shown this part as a middle lamella this part as a primary cell wall because over here they are talking about this and this part as a secondary because they are talking about this cell but when you will talk about this cell automatically this inner one will become secondary cell wall this middle one will become what primary cell wall and this outer one will become middle lamella i hope this is clear to you so if anybody now ask you about cell wall you have intro in place you have the structure of it in place middle lamella primary cell wall and secondary cell wall your job is to learn this things that middle lamella is made up of what it is made up of pectins long chain of pectics it is basically poly galactoruric acid and one unit of galacto one unit of poly galactoruric acid is alpha d galactoruric primary cell wall is made up of cellulose it is basically alpha d glucose and what polysaccharide chain it is right cellulose hemicellulose other part is <coughs> suberins and pectins the secondary cell wall is made up of cellulose plus lignin guys you remember this one this much guys that is more than enough for this cell wall your job is to understand or read again and again so that this becomes on your tip galactoronic cellulose hemicellulose suberin right cutex uh, this uh, sorry cellulose plus lignin also plus plasmodesmata we have seen it is responsible for a channel like structure pit like structure will form because of it cell to cell interactions will take place how cytoplasm of one cell will move out to the cytoplasm of another cell cytoplasm i'll explain you in the coming like <coughs> ahead so coming slides so cell wall is made up of two methods i have told you processes a positions and and what into susceptions i hope this much is clear guys cell wall is over this much read again and again this much is enough enough see this structure of cell with this cell wall again this beautiful diagram of cell wall you don't have to draw this diagram just focus upon this diagram right this diagram you will focus upon see again this is my main cell this is cell wall this is cytoplasm this is the cell wall right now here they have told you that this is my primary cell wall it is made up of pectins over here this is secondary cell wall made up of cellulose hemicellulose lignin and this inside then you will go you will get a cell membrane now you will understand about cell membrane next is cell membrane now we will move on to cell membrane guys cell membrane see don't see anything else right now just see what all we have tried to see let me draw again this was cell wall right and this is only present in plant cell and this inner part is basically my cell membrane now this cell membrane this cell membrane is present in all living beings guys irrespective of plant cell animal cell all will have this cell membrane <clears throat> even the prokaryotes will have this cell membrane all eukaryotes will have cell membrane so you can say all living beings are divided between eukaryotes and prokaryotes right under prokaryotes you have seen that monera under eukaryotes you have seen that if it has uh, like uh, unicellular multicellular under multicellular it has cell wall or not under cell wall it has photosynthesis can do photosynthesis or not this we have seen right so cell membrane will be present in all living beings so inside one is the innermost cell membrane you will automatically say that cell moon cell in membrane is the innermost is it thick or thin it is the thin it is thin 
इनर मोस्ट इलास्टिक इन नेचर वेयर एज सेल वॉल इफ यू से सेल वॉल दिस सेल वॉल इज आउटर मोस्ट थिक डेड वेयर एज सेल मेमरी इज डेड और लाइव इट इज लाइव Guys, these small small things are important. I am highlighting. When you read this in textbook or anywhere in notes, these things skip. You don't even understand the basic difference that oh, this was is, this was is important. So I am highlighting this. Don't like give your complete focus over here, please. So this is dead. I have told you this is inelastic in nature. Cell wall, air over here elastic in nature. Also, you will say that this cell wall was permeable, right? Because of this plasma desmata over here, it is. selectively permeable selectively permeable means it is only permeable for certain kind of enzyme certain kind of material right and in cell wall now you know that you had middle lamella inner cell wall oh sorry primary cell wall secondary cell wall and then this particular part will come right so cell membrane you have this particular part cell membrane is also known as plasma membrane so what is it doing it is holding up all the now the inner material inner part of all of it where cell organelles are present it is known as what cytoplasm and we have this in the middle we have a nucle nucleus right now this cytoplasm and this nucleus combined is known as protoplasm don't confuse between these words guys cytoplasm is the inner material from this cell membrane inside this cell membrane nucleus is this but when i'll say cytoplasm and nucleus i'll call this protoplasm protoplasm will include my cytoplasm and nucleus also these words should be clear crystal clear so cell wall is my protect this uh, in a cell membrane is basically protecting from outer parts Right, and what is it protecting? The protoplasm, protoplasm is getting protected, right? What if animal cell? Then animal cell doesn't have this cell wall, right? So only it has cell membrane. So cell membrane is protecting it from the outer environment. So protection is one feature. Then holding up of these protoplasm is second feature. I hope you are understanding this cell membrane. <clears throat> Now cell membrane, this much we have understood. Don't see anything else, guys. You will not understand anything in the uh, this picture you are seeing, right? now we will come to the structure of this cell membrane now there have been various theory which have been given on the structure of the that what could be the this structure of cell membrane first theory was given by lipoidal lipoidal theory lipoidal theory given by let me see the name this theory was given by overton Overton in 1902. Don't remember this year, but just to understand, in 19th century, starting of 19th century or 20th century, this was happening. So Overton, this gives lipoidal theory. Lipoidal means this cell membrane is made up of only and only lipids. Again, about lipids, you will understand when you will do science and tech in GS3 under biomolecules topic. I am also telling you topic, guys. Basic sciences, biomolecules. then you will study this particular different parts of biomolecules like lipids fat lipids carbohydrates proteins nucleic acids right certain part will be covered through these lectures which will be left over you have to cover from there don't try to understand this in very much great detail right lipids so it is made up of lipids lipid is basically fats right so as per overton the whole cell membrane structure is made up of lipids whereas moving forward in the timeline with a period of time some other scientist gave the sandwich model and this model was given by one davison and danieli danieli spelling just check through the ppt also i have written in the ppt also guide danieli Davison and Danieli. You have to remember these names, guys. I am not telling you; otherwise, I, I would not have tell you, right? Davison and Danieli. They have taught. They have uh, like. Uh, uh, they have told that this cell membrane is in the form of sandwich. Sandwich like there is a. This is a trilaminar model. Trilaminar means sandwich. You have seen na like this. 
then there is one and then there is third layer right like this it is a sandwich model how they are saying that there is a this lipid bilipid layer this is a bilipid layer this is one layer and over this we have a protein covered covering this bilipid layer so one layer second protein layer and third see trilaminar layer this Tevson and Danielli told in 1935 guys then one scientist in 1950s name is Robertson Robertson told or gave a unit membrane model unit membrane model <clears throat> It is similar as sandwich model. He also said that in between there is a bilipid layer. This is lipid layer. And above it is, is it, there is a protein layer in the cell membrane. So over here, if it is a cell, this is a animal cell. Suppose there is no cell wall involved. You take out this and you will see the structure like, like this. Bilipid layer and then protein layer like this. Now Robertson also added one thing that this unit membrane model According to this, he said that all the prokaryotes and eukaryotes have similar structure of cell membrane. That means they are made up of by the lipids and proteins and they are structurally same, but they are chemically different. So he gave two, three points which are not important. Because this lipidal theory given by Overton, this sandwich model given by Davison and Danielli, this unit me membrane model given by Robertson have been rejected but we have to understand it over the period of time this model came which is known as fluid mosaic model and this model is the most accepted one accepted one why he this uh, what, what what is the scientist name let me check just this singer and nicholson singer and nicholson just see you in 1972 you have to remember it guys no uh, alternative singer and nicholson told that whatever these models till now were saying that there is a sandwich type of model where in between there is a bilipid layer and above it it is a protein layer it is not like that they are saying that there is a whole protein layer in which these lipids are being in a present in, in a mosaic fashion i'll tell you <clears throat> just wait This is a fluid mosaic model. Now you understand. Just see over here. This is my phospholipid. Just see here. This is my head. Hydrophilic head. That means hydrophilic water loving. And th this is my hydrophobic tail. So phospholipid are like this. You are seeing. So this layer you are seeing like this right. This is right. But what they were saying that in a sandwich model that protein layer is like this right but no no it is not like that proteins are over here present like this mosaic mosaic means anywhere they are present they are not present in one fashion see over here they are present this is completely cross-sectioning uh, the lipid layer right so they are present like that and we have different name for them see this membrane proteins right also see this like this one protein is present over here one protein is present so protein is not fixed in a sandwich type of thing but it is present in a fluid mosaic model right so this part you are seeing over here these are my phospholipid layer right and proteins are present in a mosaic fashion over here you see this is one protein now this protein is known as intrinsic protein and these proteins which are on the outer surface are known as extrinsic protein guys remember as it is these proteins which you are seeing like this you have to draw also these are peripheral don't see anywhere else right now intrinsic protein and extrinsic protein extrinsic mean outer surface these this is extrinsic and this inner one is which are presented in the inner side is extrinsic intrinsic protein this intrinsic protein contains one type of protein this is tunnel protein it is known as tunnel protein guys 
Now this in the animal these uh, phospholipid chain is made up of cholesterol whereas this cholesterol is present but in plant we have only sterol not cholesterol this is the basic difference. Now you understood this plasma membrane or not plasma membrane introduction thin delicate what elastic selectively permeable live which basically protecting the protoplasm from outer surface also giving shape to the inside material right then plasma membrane theories you remember overton gave one theory which is lipoidal then gave daniel Danielli theory Davison and Danielli then give uh, you talk about the other one other one who introduced this unit membrane model then fluid magiac model fluid magiac was given by or oh, this singer and Nicholson remember this guys you have to remember it I am practicing I am doing for you only I don't have to use this uh, information anymore you have to utilize this information so write again and again Singer and Nicholson fluid mosaic model under which he had said that the plasma membrane is a bilipid layer and proteins are present in a mosaic fashion whereas the outer layer will be called as extrinsic outer layer means outer proteins will be called an extrinsic inner present will be called an intrinsic and the hole which will be like this will be called tunnel type protein. In animals we have cholesterol, in plants we have sterol as, an, as a molecule, right? <coughs> this much you have to understand guys. This is my outer surface, inner surface and this, this is the basically, this is how plasma membrane looks like or cell membrane looks like. Again see into this diagram also, now you will understand. This will not look like a chaos to you. You understand that this is the outer surface, right? this is my plasma membrane or cell membrane these are my tunnel proteins or intrinsic proteins these you are seeing over here right hydrophilic hydrophilic end and hydrophobic end these what you are seeing is cholesterol whereas in plant sterol is present i hope you are understanding these peripheral proteins means which are present in the peripheries i hope you are understanding this guys now we will see other part right now we are able to create a cell wall now we are able to see and study cell membrane now i'm really sorry for this but just understand we are going to form everything now right now cell wall is understood by us cell membrane is understood by us now we are going inside this cytoplasm and inside this cytoplasm, first important thing which we are going to see is mitochondria, guys. Now, as soon as you hear this word mitochondria, one important thing must be like quickly in everybody's mind, one important keyword must be highlighting that it is the powerhouse of the cell. Everybody must be knowing this much about the mitochondria. Now, who has bio background, who has this discipline, they know much more about mitochondria, who are from engineering, non-science non students, they might not be having much idea about it, right? But we will have a basic idea which is needed for this particular exam. We will have that idea in this mitochondria. Also, this mitochondria, we will keep studying it in physiology also. So, this mitochondria is important in physiology unit also. When I will be teaching you plant physiology, there will be studying respiration. And how mitochondria is very much important for this respiration. We will open up mitochondria more over there. Right. Right now what's important structure and function. Now first few lines introduction for mitochondria is that mitochondria as soon as you as you heard uh, as you hear this word. First thing should come to your mind that this is a double membrane. Second thing that this mitochondria has its own DNA. So it is DNA containing cell organelle. Apart from nucleus, which everyone knows that nucleus is uh, DNA is present over there. Mitochondria is having its, its own DNA guys. And when you will study 
GS3 Science and Tech. Under Science and Tech, you will be studying biotechnology. Combine what you are studying over here and there. Don't overlap. Just try to combine, connect things so that you can remember for a longer time period. Over there, you will study about three parent baby. And over there, you will study about this mitochondrial DNA. Right now, I will not open up that aspect because that is a whole different discussion that will be covered in biotechnology section in Science and Tech. Right, guys. But you understand that double membrane DNA containing it is a semi autonomous cell organism. Semi autonomous means it is capable of doing its own function. Also, it's capable of like it can be semi means half it can do half function it can do itself and half function it are uh, he's it, it is taking orders from the nucleus side right because it is the main center where every direction is being given right we will understand more right guys so you see this mitochondria now now you have to see some scientist over here mitochondria just see them first is av colicar Colicar, you remember that AV colicar is responsible for coining like this, discovering this mitochondria. So he, for the first time in 1857, when India in India, the first war of independence was happening as per V. Savarkar, this was going on, right? 1857 revolt, AV colicar in 1857 discovered this mitochondria. But later on in 1890, the detailed study of mitochondria was done by Altman. So sometimes in some uh, reference books, you will find that this Altman is credited for the discovery of this mitochondria. Detailed study. <coughs> but what you hear this word, right? Powerhouse of the cell. It is the powerhouse of the cell. That means it generates the energy and the whole energy is distributed in the form of ATP. This or everybody knows this ATP, we will understand everything about ATP, what is ATP, but not now, where it is required, we will study over there, right? So this word, this statement in powerhouse of the cell was given by Philip Skivitz, C. Kivitz, Philip Skivitz, no need to remember, just see that you have to remember this Altman for it because he has done all the like, mo most of the studies he has done Altman. Now there is Carl Benda, he particularly gave the name mitochondria guys mitochondria this name was given by Carl Benda mito means thread like right thread like structure so let us see the structure quickly see mitochondria just wait over here I'll draw it first of all you have told that it is a two membrane right it is a double membrane so this is my outer membrane in the exam also you will draw and this is its inner structure which we will see right now and this is its inner inner membrane which in the black in which i have been drawing right like this hole will be covered so this is my outer this black one my inner and this finger like structure which you are seeing right this finger in red with this finger like structure you you are seeing finger like structure it is basically crystal the name is crystal now it is a very important the most important function which you say that this is a uh, what atp generation which happens right it happens over here how atp generates this you will study more in my upcoming unit that is unit number uh, I don't know the unit number, but plant physiology when we'll be studying, then we will be covering it under respiration. But right now you just see the structure, Christe. On Christe, what happens, guys? There is <coughs> this color should have. There is a structure like this. Like this structure all over it is present. And what are these? Let me show you. Structure like this. These are basically we call them oxisomes. And these are the sites where ATP is generated. These are termed as F1, F0. I'll tell them in detail when we will be starting, uh, we'll, we'll be studying again that respiration part, but you just try to see the structure. This F1 is containing ATP, ATPase enzyme. And this ATPase enzyme is basically doing ATP synthesis. 
the whole ets in respiration you will study in respiration when we will be studying respiration you will be studying three parts a three cycle which is going on krebs cycle glycolysis and ets that is electron transport system ets happens over here guys so the space between this outer membrane and inner membrane we call it peri mitochondrial space and it is a very important just over here you try to know the names perimitochondrial why it is important we will see it in respiration don't worry which we will not overlap things right i'm just trying to get familiarized try to get familiarized with the word right now perimitochondrial space very important it takes part in the respiration process now this i know outer membrane inner membrane perimitochondrial space cristae i have they have the finger like structures finger like structures are cristae we have oxisome oxisomes onto it which are very important for atp synthesis then what is this inter what do we call this inside thing we call it matrix this whole like for example in this inside the cell you call them cytoplasm right over here you call it matrix matrix and this matrix contain the circular dna which we are talking about it contain ribosomes and other enzymes which are very important very crucial for respiration to take place and this respiration is important for energy generation that means and then if this energy is transferred to other parts of the cell that's why you say it is a powerhouse of the cell because here power is being generated and transferred so this is energy transducing system also that this mitochondria is having energy transducing system see over here again the diagram which you will draw i have shown outer membrane don't see anything here, anywhere else right now guys you have seen outer membrane this is my inner membrane you see over here inner membrane they have written a lot of things about it inner membrane now this inside what we have what, what we have is a matrix right here you see this is matrix and in matrix dna is pre present right dna molecule you can see what else f1 particle which i have told you f1 particle is a part of oxisome you will understand this more in respiration don't worry f1 f0 right like this structure you will see f1 f0 f1 is responsible for atp atp's enzyme and atp synthesis <clears throat> this much you just remember right now about a mitochondria remember the scientist kolikar and what all we have studied right altman is responsible for detailed study of it benda is responsible for giving this particular cell organelle uh, organelles a name that is mitochondria right guys this much is important for mitochondria more information you will come to know in respiration one more thing when you understood that mitochondria is basically responsible for the respiration basically responsible for generating energy in the form of atp more you will understand more function you will come to know about it in respiration one more function is a cytoplasmic inheritance and what is cytoplasmic inheritance the separate video i'll make for cytoplasmic inheritance because it is written in our syllabus as it is don't worry about it there it will get clear now let us understand next cell organelle that is plastid guys plastid let me use the different one plastid now this plastids are found in animal cell no these are only found in plant cell are area of concern also through plastid you will know that this is the area where photosynthesis happens this much everybody knows i guess right but we will see in detail that how plastids like what are plastids first of all how will you explain them if it comes directly plastids now plastids are basically formed from or how many types of plastid we have what are the different components of plastid you will see that plastids are basically formed from the cells of merismatic tissue there we find one thing that is proplastids and these proplastids then become either leucoplast or chromoplast 
for chloroplast now plastids are the pigment containing organelles right pigments they contain pigments so scientists who discovered them scientists name you can see i'll add it in the content but it is not important over here but who has found this they have divided this pig they have this divided the plastids into different classes like leucoplast chromoplast chloroplast with the by with the differentiating of pigments in which certain pigments are present right so somebody have divided like leucoplast and chromoplast only and under chromoplast they have given chloroplast we will understand it one by one what are these factors or what are the factors which are differentiating them leucoplast chromoplast chloroplast but plastids basically you understand that plastids are they have emerged from this proplastid which is present in the merismatic tissues of the plant and from there it, they form leucoplast either leucoplast chromoplast or chloroplast and they have their own functions we have to focus upon the functions over here this you must must have heard a lot of time but now everything should be clear for everybody who is watching this lecture right this is my plastids so plastids till now i have told you again plastids is also dna containing guys when it contains its dna then you can call that plastids are also semi autonomous half of the instruction it is getting from here half of the instruction it will be getting from nucleus that's why it is semi autonomous these words are important semi autonomous dna containing plastid is also double walled i'll show you but plastids are i just see this proplastid right it has emerged from proplastid chloroplastid in the form of this chloroplast leucoplast and chromoplast till now see till here right now these plastids are the largest cell organelles in whom animal cell or plant cell obviously plant cell then in animal cell what is the largest cell organelle mitochondria because over there this pl plastid is not present now let's differentiate guys leucoplast we have chromoplast and we have chloroplast now leuco means white that means colorless generally we say that this particular part is colorless plast means living not important for us so this is basically colorless so these are my colorless plastids so these are colorless so do they uh, the, the term which we have heard photosynthesis takes place where leucoplast no not in leucoplast but what they are responsible for then what is the function of them their function is of storage guys storage of food now food can be stored in the form of carbohydrates or you can say starch food can be stored in the form of what fats or you can call them lipids food can be stored in the form of protein and in plants we have what carbohydrate rich food we have what cereals protein rich food we have legumes right <clears throat> so we have a term for it like for the uh, for the this particular leucoplast who are responsible for this carbohydrate storage we call this amyloplast amyloplast over here which are responsible let wait let me show you over here amyloplast you can see those who are responsible for storage of carbohydrates or starch those who are responsible for storage of fats and lipids elaioplast elaioplast and those which are responsible for storage of proteins which we have seen in leguminous plant that protein percentage also i have discussed in agronomy so we call it proteinoplast so legumes will be having this proteinoplast plastids right this carbo cereals will be having this amyloplast right and the monocot dicot seeds plants which we are having may be containing this alioplast plastids till now it should be very clear that plastids are emerge from proplastids just wait 
these proplastids can be divided into leuco and leuco we have seen leucoplastids now there is one chromoplastid Clo chroma means leuco means colorless or white right chromo means colorful chrome full of color plast means living so these are colorful plastids so this color is given by some pigment so it is containing all the pigment which are giving several different colors but not one color that is green color if it is green giving green color then it will come under chloroplast plastid so for example in tomato you find red color this is because of a lycopene pigment in somewhere you find yellow color orange color this is because of carotene pigment now this chlor this uh, green color chloro means green and this chroma means chloro this uh, sorry colorful and color also include green but again it differentiate that's why some scientists have not categorized this chloroplast uh, differentially like right? they have given this chloroplast chloroplast under only chromoplast don't get confused chromo is different chloro is different chloro is responsible for green color only so you see all the green vegetables green leafy vegetables are basically containing chlorophyll this green color is because of chlorophyll now before moving to this chloroplast what what should be the function of chromoplast what do you think chromoplast function is it is giving colors to the fruits uh, fruits and other things of the plant right then why what is responsible like it is attracting basically insects and because of this insect movement pollination would happen it is also basically helping to disperse the seeds right so this chromoplast is important for giving different color to the fruits or different parts of the plant now this chloroplast here the most important function of this chloroplast is photosynthesis we will see chloroplast in detail because photosynthesis is the main process it is happening in photosynthesis we have to see in detail because it is under plant physiology written in the syllabus so let us understand chloroplast a bit in detail and this chloroplast will be again taken up in photosynthesis when we will be studying photosynthesis in detail but right now just notice the structure what is this chloroplast what is its structure right let us see the structure of chloroplast guys chloroplast is very important you can say chloroplast is that much important that everything is dependent upon them because they are able to produce the they are able to complete this phenomena of photosynthesis photosynthesis in detail we will study separate lecture there will be like three four classes only denoted to only devoted to this particular uh, photosynthesis now chloroplast structure you see now i have told you chloroplast is a plastic is a type of plastic which is containing chlorophyll as a pigment which is giving green color also i have told you that plastids are double walled so you have to draw the double wall outer membrane inner membrane the in the mitochondria i was calling them peri mitochondrial right here peri plastid see guys for the nine non science student these are only words which you have to remember only name particular nomenclature periplastidal the only difficulty should be this this difficulty should also be like it will be it will go away when you will repeat them again and again draw them again and again right so this is the space but this space is not that much useful as peri mitochondrial there a lot of things happens which will study in respiration but this space is not that important but it is like present between outer and inner right inner membrane now the most important structure of this chloroplast are this those who are from those who are from bio student they must be knowing it but don't worry these are only structure now you are also knowing it see these structure this one unit i am taking out this this is known as thylakoid thylakoid and i have joined all this unit now this unit this unit i have joined now whole unit will be known as grana these are only words you are calling with suppose you there these are they are your new friends treat them like this then only you will get familiar with these words grana so one unit only thylakoid other one is other if you will join them whole grana like this these are present and these are joined by one channel that is fret channel just get familiarized with the nomenclature first fret channel and you will see everywhere like the inside this 
uh, you can say you will see this right now inside the cell i am calling it cytoplasm inside this mitochondria i was calling it matrix inside this particular chloroplast we call it this whole fluid type thing we call stroma under mitochondria the fluid like feature we were calling it matrix and in the cytosol cell we are calling it cytoplasm don't try to connect them that their function is not same but kind of we i'm just connecting them right so that you don't get confused so stroma is also containing the dna which we are talking about that plastid is a dna containing organelle over here dna is containing ribosome is containing enzymes different enzymes which are responsible for photosynthesis are containing for example in rubisco enzyme the most important enzyme for photosynthesis you will understand it in photosynthesis class when you will be studying light and dark cycle of photosynthesis now this thylakoid is so much important so much important that this whole grana that the pigment which we are talking about right chlorophyll pigment is responsible right this thylakoid on this thylakoid these pigments are present guys and these pigments are present in the form of group whole group is present and we call that group in this group what we have chlorophyll lot of chlorophyll we have there have a different types of chlorophyll but the most important chlorophyll is chlorophyll a and b again we will see in detail in photosynthesis class we have carotene also in this particular group we have xanthophyll also they are forming a group they are basically capturing the light and initiating the photosynthesis process just right now understand those chlorophyll pigment which we are talking about are combined in a group and this group is known as quanta som quanta som and later on like they form it as a system pigment system 1 pigment photosynthesis system 1 photosynthesis system 2 leave it right now you will remember it in photosynthesis class just try to understand only this structure this thylakoid they are having this particular pigments like this this pigments are the group of this pigments pigments are quanta soms this is basically called as functional unit of this chloroplast if chloroplast is functioning it is because of this quanta som and this quanta som is functioning because of the presence of these pigments chlorophyll a and b in, is in large quantity that's why we say chlorophyll is a necessary for photosynthesis process we have carotene pigment also xanthophyll pigment also they have different function but the major function they are doing cumulatively is of photosynthesis now photosynthesis is a very big to understand we'll understand it in respective class i hope till now this you understand now i'll show you the actual diagram see this guys now you will understand this is my thylakoid and if i join all thylakoid these will be grana right this whole will be known as grana and the matrix part in matrix we called in mitochondria but over here we'll call it stroma and in stroma present the chloroplast dna also we'll be having rhizosomes this rhizosomes are present for protein synthesis see more over here right this thylakoid you have seen stroma now you know grana granal thylakoids are nothing but over whole this grana stroma you have seen nucleoid right just see this over here you will understand this nadp nadph in photosynthesis don't understand right now just telling you what you should familiarize with right now slowly gradually and gradually gradually and slowly we will when we will be studying this uh, photosynthesis plant physiology unit now then everything will be crystal clear to you about this mitochondria plastids and some more organelles also right which are involved now see next cell organelle and which is very important till now we have seen we have found cell wall cell membrane mitochondria plastids these are very important crucial every cell organelle is important every part of the cell which we are studying has its own like features right now we will go and we will understand ribosomes guys now as soon as you are Uh, hearing this term ribosome automatically one term protein synthesis might be coming to your mind right it ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis before understanding that 
first understand that ribosomes are basically present where where have you seen the ribosome uh, ribosomes right now right now you have seen the ribosomes in mitochondria also plastids also that means they are having their own ribosomes mitochondria plastids in cytoplasm when you will study endoplasmic tractal in uh, like uh, in the i had uh, the ppts or uh, slides i'm i'll tell you about endoplasmic reticulum over there ribosomes are also present so basically ribosomes are present as a cytoplasmic ribosome we can call it cytoplasmic right in mitochondria they are present in the matrix we call them mitochondrial or matrix ribosome mitochondria over here in plastids they are also present ribosomes so first time as i have told you that you have to remember some scientists over here you remember this clot and palladi it is up to you if you want to remember their names or not but when they when upsc will ask in the second part they will ask obviously about some of the features of certain uh, this cell organelles right and most importantly they ask about mitochondria plastids right so these two are their main focus right but we have to understand this also their structure and function should be our priority so they founded cloud discovered it basically and called it a microsome don't need there is no need to understand their discovery in greater detail right there is no need guys just references references is important if you have leave if you leave these words na palade and claude in the starting in the intro of your answer about ribosome more than sufficient more than sufficient so they claude told uh, gave it to the name of a microsome later on palade come in 18 uh, 55 or 1955 something and he gave it the name of ribosomes now ribosome is a one type of a cell organelle which is not having a membrane i have told you that you or you karyotes are having their organelles with cell mem with membrane bounded organelles right this we are calling membrane bound organelles that means every organelles which i am having they are membrane bounded but ribosome is a one type of cell organelle which is not having any membrane membrane less organism organelle over here you have seen mitochondria and plastids double membrane you have seen outer and inner some mito some organelles we will study they are only having uh, single membranes right like this we will differentiate in the last but you keep this thing in mind all right let's see then uh, ribosome just wait see this ribosome right so i was wrong in not 1855 1955 the study of this ribosomes took place right now before studying all this ribosome is also called as protein factory that means protein synthesis happens over here this is the basic function of ribosome right so ribosome how this like what is the structure of this ribosome first we will try to understand this ribosome structure now this ribosome is basically made up of anywhere if they will ask you anyone will ask you you just say that ribosome is made up of r rna r means ribosomal ribosomal rna what is rna what is dna everything will be cleared guys just wait everything is connected just keep this thing in mind r rna plus protein and their different composition right like for example there will be percentage of rna like 60% rna 40% rna and they are creating ribosome basically and what their function is protein synthesis they are creating protein how they are creating protein this is all part of genetics uh, when i will start genetics the function of rna dna how they are instructing what is the role of mrna all we will be studying right now structure is important so ribosome is basically divided into two types first one is basically 70s and you must have seen this s right 80s the two type of 70s and 80s what is s you must have seen while studying 12th class ncrt and uh, over there you will study if you have not studied i will give you homework that you try to study this 12th class ncrt over there chapter number 8 about cell you try to study this also you study 9th class ncrt so over there you will find or whenever we see this s what is this s s is basically a unit the scientist named swedberg unit and what is this unit it shows 
the sedimentation concentration of this particular ribosome. Basically, you don't have to understand anything. Just see that 70S and 80S is showing the size of this ribosome. So 70S is basically smaller, right? 80S is a bit larger, right? So now where these ribosomes are present, 70S is present where and 80S is present where? This is my area of concern. Now this 70S, the smaller ribosome is present in basically prokaryotes. And those who are not immediately remembering prokaryotes, P for primitive. That means they are primitive type of cells. That means no nucleus, well-defined nucleus and no cell organelles with membrane-bound cell organelles. So, right? This much you should know immediately. So, these are present in prokaryotes. But also, the 70S is present in mitochondria. Exception is over there, mitochondria and plastids. So, the ribosomes you are seeing in the matrix of mitochondria and the stroma of plastids that or chloroplast that was basically this 70s ribosome now one more point you have come across that when you will write about this microsome uh, mitochondria you will write about this 70s ribosome this 80s is generally 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 found in the eukaryotic cell and where then in eukaryotic cytoplasm so these are basically cytoplasmic ribosomes and cytoplasmic ribosome are present on endoplasmic reticulum, which we will see ahead. Will you you will able to connect? Till now, ribosome 70s, 80s types. 70s prokaryotes, exception mitochondria plastids, because this mitochondria is present in eukaryotes only. So this is exception, and plastid means chloroplasts. Or this 80s is found in eukaryotic. That means cytoplasmic ribosomes are 80s. Now the structure you see guys, don't see anything else in the slide, structure. This 70S is divided, see the whole ribosome is divided into this ribosome, whatever you ribosome you come across, either mitochondria plastid or 70S or 80S, they are, they are basically divided into larger subunit and smaller subunit or you can say large unit and small unit, right? So 70S and 80S will also be divided into this large subunit and small subunit. Again, 80S will be divided like that large subunit and small subunit. So this is the structure of basically a ribosome. Now in prokaryotes, they are having in the size of 50S and 30S. So if you will add, it will be equal to 80S. So you have to remember that it is not 80S differentiation. No, this is under 70S. The larger subunit is having basically 50S and smaller is 30S. Over here in 80S, it is having 60S and small is 40S. This you have to remember. How will you remember? Again, I am telling you 50 plus 30 is 80, but it is not under 80S. It is coming under 70S. You don't need anything conceptual into this guys. Just understand I have I am understanding the ribosome structure. Ribosome structure is divided into larger unit and smaller unit. These are placed like this. So in 70s larger unit is basically 50s and smaller unit is basically 30s. Whereas in 80s larger unit is 60s smaller unit is 40s. If you are not understand just back the video all right. Now you see the structure. This large unit structure is somewhat like this sorry and this smaller unit will look like this now this remember the name guys what i'm writing as it is you have to remember this is basically my this is basically rich. This is stock region. This is my central proturbans. Central proturbans. This is my 50s larger unit. Whereas my 30s is having this is as head region. This is as platform region. Head region, platform region, and this is my basically cleft. Just wait. Right, head cleft, C L E F T. 
this is my 30s similarly this structure will be changed structure will remain same but the size will change of 60s and 40s also now what happens is this thing joins together this my base part and this is my 30s will join together like this i'll show you right now how they will join this head part will join to this central pro turbine pro turbines right they will join and they will join and then protein synthesis will happen by mrna you will understand it later on just try to understand the structure first this much should be cleared guys this is my uh this region okay for example this is my larger subunit this is my smaller subunit and this larger subunit will join to this smaller subunit and will form a basically polyribosome we call it but you can understand that from here protein synthesis will happen now because you need something some to join this you have some ionic bond right and for this ionic bond to happen you need this mg2 positive ion that means there is a need of magnesium so one more thing you come across which i have told you in unit number 5 of soil and nutrient management of paper 1 that you have to understand essential plant nutrients under this i have told you to focus upon npk and camgs i have told you that you will all in uh, like whole paper 1 and paper 2 wherever you will get the function of some uh, this uh, npk and camgs just note it down so here one more function you will add that it is important for this particular structure of a ribosome of plant that's why magnesium is also important one more function one more why it is essential you get one more point write it over there too so i hope you understood this one see now see this image now you will understand this image my larger subunit my smaller subunit just wait guys so this is larger this is smaller subunit i have told you that they will join together right they will join together and don't see trna mrna right now you will not understand those who are from bio section who have studied genetics they will understand but don't understand right now everything will be clear crystal clear when we will start genetics but right now just see the structure this larger subunit and this smaller subunit will join and they will do the protein synthesis they will join because of this mg positive ion which is responsible for this ionic bond between them right guys let me some show you more this over here 50s ribosome 30s ribosome automatically now you will know that this is a prokaryotic oh sorry yeah prokaryotic it is inside prokaryotic or mitochondrial or chloroplast one right automatically you will know this right and this amino acids are basically what are amino acids basically protein is the polypeptide chain of this amino acids only right you will understand it more detail don't worry right now just see this 50s and 30s so if i will say the structure is like this 80s and sorry 60s and 40s you will automatically know this is the eukaryotic one or cytoplasmic ribosomes this much i hope it is clear function is protein synthesis simple right now we will move ahead and we will try to see another cell organelles uh, organelles that is basically endoplasmic reticulum now we will see a system guys g e r l before seeing this these three things we will see simultaneously what is this system this system is golgi apparatus endoplasmic reticulum and lysosome how and why these are associated you will understand soon but first understand this gerl systems endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum means endoplasmic means inside the cytoplasm there is a structure there is a, a structure like this i'll show you see suppose this is my nuclear right so let me show you the structure for this is my cell inside it i have uh, side uh, this nucleus and on nucleus this like this my endoplasmic reticulum is attached now i'll just zoom it out all right so this is my nuclear membrane you will understand it when we will study it nucleus more but just see nucleus membrane right this is my nuclear membrane on on this this structure this hollow structure like this is attached 
and this is in connection with the nuclear surface nuclear this membrane this is the connection in connection and this connection is because of one phenomena which i'll tell you what but now this is connected and this structure which is connected now this is known as cisternae cisternae i'll show you the spelling also just try to understand guys endoplasmic reticulum under endoplasmic reticulum you will see rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum types we will understand it just wait now this endoplasmic reticulum right now you are seeing is connected with the nuclear membrane and over here you will see this cisterna is hollow structure this is hollow structure completely filled up with some enzymes and these are containing lot of enzymes like 30 plus enzymes it is containing enzymes like atp atps enzyme like deoxy oxygenate ribo, uh, enzyme right like that there are several other enzymes no need to go into that depth but also notice one thing that this is the feature like cisternae so endoplasmic reticulum have cisternae one they are having a vesicles also now what are vesicles i'll show you so there are small structures like this round shaped hollow structure structures these are the vesicles present near cisternae right third they are containing tubules tubule like structure what is tubule like structure like this is a branch structure like this now what you will notice this is my cell membrane this is a cell membrane right and this is my nuclear membrane then you have seen cisternae you have seen vesicles you have seen tubules and one thing is missing on cisternae there is a placement of what ribosomes like this but when the structure is changing from cisternae to tubules there is no ribosome there is no ribosome present on these tubules right only over here these are present ribosomes now automatically this is my cytoplasmic ribosome automatically it will be ats ribosome i hope you are able to connect everything you will be able to connect once we will finish this whole cell parts and cell organelles functions and structure so till now you have seen that endoplasmic reticulum it basically having three structures cisternae vesicles and tubules right i'll tell you who is the scientist who have first time discovered it right i'll tell you the name i have written in the slide you if you can remember then remember on how you will remember also i'll tell you okay after that you just see that endoplasmic reticulum has these three structures cisternae vesicles and tubules now this tubules part on which ribosomes are not attached are known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum why they are smooth because there is no presence of ribosome whereas ribosome is a present on this cisternae part and basically cisternae is associated with this rough endoplasmic reticulum what is the function of a rough endoplasmic how they are different we will study it don't worry right now just see this now one thing you must be observing that there is a connection of this endoplasmic reticular reticulum from this nucleus to this cell membrane so if you have seen the structure of cell is like that who is maintaining it now you try to know that what is giving the shape to the cell because of this particular endoplasmic reticulum we are getting a mechanical support guys the whole mechanical support is getting in the form of cytoskeletal function is doing this endoplasmic reticulum by this image you know you are also observing that the material inside the nucleus would be transferring from this endoplasmic reticulum to this to the either they can go to the cytoplasm or they will go to some uh, golgi apparatus or lysosomes right so there is cellular transportation of material is happening now these are i am just telling you some general functions that this is happening as it is what we are seeing right now right right now you just understand this and let me show you the image now you see this endoplasmic reticulum guys now 
I have told you that this is my nuclear membrane and there is an opening from nuclear membrane right and this is connected with this particular endoplasmic reticulum. This is my endoplasmic reticulum starting. Now this is a 3D hollow system. This is interconnected with it. And on this you are seeing these yellow dots at rhizo ribosomes, 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 sorry. Now these ribosomes are at the you know, 60s ribosomes, right? Sorry, 80s ribosomes. Now on which this is my cisterne part, this this cisterne part, right? This is my cisterne part and cisterne is the part of rough endoplasmic reticulum on which ribosomes are attached. It is giving me intracellular transport. That means material from here can go, nucleus can go over here. Now endoplasmic reticulum can support to the, uh, can transfer material to the cytoplasm. They can transfer material to the Golgi apparatus too. They can transfer matter to the lysosome too. It is giving me me mechanical support that is cytoskeleton, cytoplasm, skeletal system it is giving me. And one more word you will find in any textbook you take, in any reference book you take endomembrane system. It is giving me an endomembrane system. And this endomembrane system is forming not because of this but Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum and lysosome system is known as endomembrane system because it is completely connected my cell. I'll show you guys. See like this. Cisterne, it is shown in this rough endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum like this. Now over here, basically, you will see this uh, cell membrane also and smooth endoplasmic reticulum is basically connected with the end part, this cell membrane part. And this connection you can see with the nuclear membrane. <coughs> Now, what is the function of this particular endoplasmic reticulum? You will understand it now. Now, you understand that over here when you will understand this nucleus, basically over here mRNA is being generated. You understood that ribosome function is to generate protein synthesis and ribosome is attached to this rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, you get something. Now, you will understand. Wait. Now you see the difference between my rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum guys. Basic function. What is happening in rough endoplasmic reticulum? If you will see and you will say that it is connected with the nucleus basically and presence of ribosome, ribosomes. So presence of ribosome because of this they are basically synthesizing very important function synthesizing proteins. They are synthesizing proteins and also they are transporting it to where it is required. How? I have told you this is cisterne, right? This is I have shown you. Now what happens if, now what, what will happen? There will be a bud-like structure which will be detached and it will form a vesicle nearby it. So I have told you that this vesicle is always near cisterne. What is this vesicle, vesicle containing? It is containing the protein which is formed by this rough endoplasmic reticulum. So this vesicle is basically containing proteins. So they are basically protein contained, contained vesicles. Whereas smooth endoplasmic reticulum is not having any, they are tubular like. They are tubular like structure which I have told you. And they are like cisterne structures, right? So this tubular structure are not having ribosome. So what is their function then? What is it doing? It is doing the formation or synthesizing of this lipids. Now you know the importance of lipids in cell membrane. In most of the membranes of organelles, lipid is being utilized, right? So lipid is being synthesized and transported by this smooth uh, endoplasmic reticulum. And how again these vesicles will form nearby it, but this vesicles will be containing lipids, not proteins. So the vesicles near tubules or you can say smooth endoplasmic reticulum will be having lipids into it and the vesicles near cisterne will be having proteins. Now if I say the combined function of ER not smooth not rough that they are basically synthesizing proteins and lipids and they are getting transferred to where I'll tell you when we'll be studying Golgi apparatus just in next slide. So these are being transferred to Golgi apparatus or they can trans directly transfer it to 
for the cytoplasm also <coughs> this much i hope it is clear to you sister ne synthesizing proteins they are synthesizing lipid this is the basic function guys now i'll tell you more uh, differences between them which you can add for example you can add that uh, this smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a near to i have told you it is near to cell membrane right whereas this rough endoplasmic reticulum is near to nuclear membrane so when smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a near to cell membrane let me draw again this you will understand by this let me draw the diagram again i have told you this is my nucleus and like this these are connected right what is this sister ne rough endoplasmic reticulum and tubule structure and this is my cell membrane so over here i have told you that the cell membrane are having in cell wall i have told you that this cell membrane is having a plas desmata right desmata system so it is having one structure called desmotubule i'll tell you the name as it is so this structure is basically this tubule and it is connecting this cell membrane so anything which is which is being synthesized over over here can be transferred directly outside this cell membrane also what i'm trying to say is it is acting as a connection also wait just wait desmotubules over here you will see desmotubules so this smooth endoplasmic reticulum is basically nearer to my cell membrane that's why this desmotubules will be formed and plasmodesmata i have told you right nuclear membrane rough endoplasmic reticulum draw like that uh, the how i have drawn and this is my uh, this uh, particular cell membrane i hope this is clear also this rough endoplasmic reticulum or smooth endoplasmic reticulum s e r r e r smooth ret endoplasmic reticulum is also helpful for detoxification guys detoxification of harmful hormones harmful proteins harmful enzymes it also does detoxification in liver <clears throat> now you understand this just see you don't see anywhere else rough endoplasmic reticulum means this is synthesizing proteins so the areas in my body or in my in the plant cell where proteins are needed more there rer concentration will be more where lipids will be needed more the concentration of ser will be more automatically right so this is one point for example this adipocytes in smooth adipocytes means this fatty cells production liver cells are also containing more ser whereas fibroblast insulin they are containing more protein where protein is needed for example collagen one more important part of er is cell plate formation guys what is cell plate formation cell plate formation you will understand when i'll be telling you cell division how cell health cell cycle formed how cells are getting replicated over there when cell is getting replicated a stage comes and that stage uh, endoplasmic reticulum help in formation of cell plate formation and you will connect this point again when i'll be telling you cell division then this point will be more clear this much is very important guys i have told you mechanical uh, support enzyme circulation secretion this much i have told you right this is very important in order to understand this endoplasmic reticulum guys now we will understand next cell organelle that is golgi apparatus guys <clears throat> see this golgi apparatus first don't see anywhere else golgi apparatus structure you don't see first this golgi apparatus is being observed by this george name scientist but you have heard the that morphological structure this structure is given by camillo golgi that's why the name golgi apparatus or golgi body is given by because of this name uh, of this scientist that is camillo golgi also this golgi body is observed by uh, ultra uh, picture of this golgi body was given by dalton and this is known as dalton complex also dalton's complex also it is called as a lipochondria not mitochondria lipochondria one more point which you have to understand from uh, the point of view that in plant cell this golgi bodies are known as a dicto dictosomes dictosomes 
in plant cells they are not called as golgi body it is called as a dictosome so what is the function basically right now just now we have understood that the formation of synthesis of proteins and lipids was happening in endoplasmic reticulum and this was getting transferred to this golgi apparatus so what is golgi apparatus is doing the what is the function before that we'll just see the function of it or we'll just see the structure of that what is this structure we will try to understand this first right now in structure there are three things guys first of all you see the structure structure of golgi body over here also you will see one hollow structure like like this curved slightly curved and at the end 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 of it will be bulged or you can say solen type thing this is known as cisterni again guys and likewise in this fashion again it will be formed and these are connected guys all right these will be connected and likewise these will be formed in a linear chain like this again this will form this will form so basically what was happening is i told you that endoplasmic reticulum was secreting out or you can say was uh, synthesizing proteins and lipids now these proteins and lipids will go to this golgi body it will be packaged and it will be sent to the location where it is required for example for cell membrane if it is required for the formation of cell membrane then it will go over there for cytoplasmic activities also out of the cell outside the cell it is being sent in the form of proteins and lipids i hope this is clear but over here you are seeing that cisterne is one type of one structure which is having which it is having second one is vesicles vesicles are smaller type of this uh, uh, smaller type formation of this particular part and whereas vacuoles will be larger in larger spherical which will be containing i'll tell you what also they are having this structured right like this you are seeing so this become my concave side and this will become my convex side like this you are seeing right so this is my concave side this is my convex side so it is showing a polarity this we call a polarity like this you are you are seeing and in the picture also you are seeing so this is my trans side these are just terminology guys terminology you have to understand trans side and this is my cis side cis and trans what is it it is just position we are saying for the convex side i am saying cis for the trans from the for the concave side i am saying trans even if you don't want to know what is concave what is convex just understand this that this side will be having trans and this side will be having concave so this will be my mature side and this will be my formative side formative side this part will be near to nuclear membrane and this part will be near to my cell membrane so for example now if this is a cell this is my nucleus i want you to place golgi body how will you place the golgi body like this guys so the this side would be cis side will be closer to i have told you this formative side should be closer to nucleus and this cell membrane side towards cell membrane uh, my uh, uh, for this mature side should be trans side should be towards cell membrane i hope this much is clear i'll show you so see this structure guys as it is over here you are seeing small vesicles right this is small vesicles you are seeing and here over here you are seeing large uh, large vacuoles right let me show you again and let me combine the function of er and golgi now and when we will study lysosome i'll combine the function of lysosome too so over here let me draw nuclear membrane this is my nucleus now these are nuclear pore all right nuclear pore we call it we'll understand it more when we will understand nucleus let me draw this endoplasmic reticulum like this my endoplasmic reticulum i have told you golgi apparatus and nuclear membrane there will be towards nuclear membrane there will be my convex side this way
like this or you can draw it a bit like this it will have solar ends you have to show the solar ends also right this is my smooth endoplasmic reticulum tubule stripe right and let me close it by a cell membrane this is my cell membrane just try to see this guys what is happening now i'm trying to combine everything which you have studied over here i have told you the vesicle this is cisternae of rough endoplasmic reticulum over here i have forgotten to draw the my ribosomes now understand over here this endoplasmic reticulum because of the presence of this uh, ribosome protein synthesis were happening and protein synthesis were happening this was packaged in the form of vesicles over here vesicles are present now these are containing proteins the vesicles near a smooth endoplasmic reticulum will be containing what lipids now what will happen from this this phase this phase i have called you formative phase and formative phase is my cis phase right cis position now this is my cis position of golgi apparatus from here these vesicles small spherical which are containing either proteins or lipid so this will enter and these are connected with each other right so this will enter suppose protein containing vesicles are nearby it they will contain the uh, this protein will be transferred to golgi apparatus it will be packaged and it will be transferred in the form of large vacuoles so over here this uh this end will be swollen and this end solar end will detach and in the form of large vacuole it will be present so golgi apparatus three parts cisternae vesicles and vacuoles just remember it over here then they will be sent to their respective location right now when we will be studying lysosome i'll con uh, i'll connect lysosome also and how they are connecting to with golgi apparatus and how they are forming this system grl system what Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, and lysosome system. Now, Golgi apparatus also depends upon the position, like where should be the position of Golgi apparatus, like in the cell where you will find the Golgi apparatus. See, if it is animal cell, you will find Golgi apparatus near nucleus, whereas in plant cell, you will find Golgi apparatus. like this you will find golgi apparatus in a diffused diffused uh, like dispersed not specified in one particular location but animal cell it will be near nucleus not in plant cell in animal cell their number of golgi apparatus is or golgi body is one per animal cell in animal cell there be one one golgi apparatus whereas whereas in plant cell there will be around 6 to 12 golgi apparatus per plant cell this difference also you guys should know i have written this only don't try to see anything just for so that i should not leave any point i have written this you will same thing i have told you number of golgi one per animal cell plant cell 6 to 12 per plant cell right i have just written it also the shape of this golgi apparatus yes this word should be important guys pleomorphic shape you should write in your content that pleomorphic shape means as per the function this golgi apparatus is having the ability to change its shape as per the function of its and what the word is associated with it pleomorphic right this you should also remember now one function i have told you secretion and packaging means where there will be a lot of secretion taking place where there will be need of lot of secretions which should take place for either proteins or lipids there will be more golgi apparatus right and packaging means in the form of packages they send to for example if it is polysaccharides it will be secreted by goblet cells collagen where like connected tissue it is needed proteins it can secrete right it also secrete hormones hormones like thyroxine so this golgi apparatus also secrete hormones one more important thing it does is glycosylation it helps in glycosylation what is glycosylation guys 
ग्लाइकोसाइलेशन इन ग्लाइकोसाइलेशन व्हाट इज हैपनिंग द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ग्लाइकोप्रोटीन एंड फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ग्लाइकोलिपिड व्हाट इज दिस ग्लाइकोप्रोटीन इज फॉर्मड व्हेन प्रोटीन इज कंबाइंड विद कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स एंड व्हेन लिपिड्स is combined with carbohydrates it is forming glycolipids so formation of this glycosylation is also happening guys and how this glycoprotein is helping glycoprotein helps in cell identification that the cell will identify how by this glycosylation by generating this glycoprotein so right now don't stress yourself with all these words what you can do is just write down what i have taught you like for example golgi apparatus i have told you few functions right just write down one as it is for endoplasmic reticulum also just write down as it is in one page and end this topic then in there right then try to compare it a lot of information is coming to you see this lecture two times for the people who are from non science or non bio background see this lecture two times i'm telling you now we will see the final one that is a lysosome guys lysosomes now you must have heard that lysosomes are suicidal bag right this is one part only which you have heard in ninth class right lysosomes basically are uh, you can say are present in first of all all eukaryotic cells so they are not present in present in prokaryotic also endoplasmic reticulum is present only in eukaryotic except exceptions are there except the mature rbcs they are not containing these lysosomes also this endoplasmic reticulum is not present in mature rbcs right first of all you understand this but what is this lysosomes is doing what is the function of this directly come to this function first what is it trying to do the lysosome is basically doing a digestion digestion of what any food particle that has been entered into the cell it is digesting it who is digesting lysosome is digesting so lysosome is basically we also cleaning the job of cleaning it is doing by it is done by this lysosome all right or this food is digested of or it is if it is undigested then it is being thrown out of the cell that is also done by lysosome also lysosome is acting as the digestion of harmful pathogens which have entered or you can say if the internal structure if the cell organelles are damaged suppose if micro or this mitochondria is damaged then what what will do what will be done so lysosomes will act as the digestion of these uh, damaged cell organelles will also be digested by this lysosome also if the whole cell is infected that lysosome act as a suicidal suicidal bag you can say or how i'll tell you how so these are all the functions which is done by this lysosomes all right but first you will see the structure of it how the lysosomes look like so lysosomes look like in a spherical shape guys automatically when lysosome picture will come to you lysosomes picture will come to you a spherical shape should come into your mind small spherical spherical shape in this spherical shape what is present acidic hydro this is important hydro lytic enzyme now what this acidic hydrolytic enzyme does this hydrolytic enzyme breaks the bond and the bond in the form of form for example if protein is present protein bond is formed by peptide chain right peptide bond is over there so hydrolytic enzymes contain peptide this uh, breaking of this peptide zone also happens over here for example if it is ester then ester bonds will be break and broken down if it is glycoside then glycosidic breakdown will happen so all breakdown is happening because of this acidic hydrolytic enzyme present into this so on the basis of this present of presence of this acidic hydrolytic uh, enzyme there are four types in this particular lysosomes on the basis of this matrix present present inside the lysosome so there are four types so four types of lysosome you find that's why lysosomes are polymorphic in nature polymorphic means their structure four types of uh, ty four types of lysosome you will find first is a primary 
lysosomes secondary lysosomes tertiary lysosomes and fourth one is auto lysosomes now what is primary primary lysosomes will be those lysosomes in which the inner enzyme that is hydrolytic enzyme is inactive in form inactive hydrolytic enzyme he that means it is not active whereas in secondary what will happen this inside matrix that is containing hydroelectric enzyme it will become active so that means digestion of all the foreign material which has entered into the cell will start happening this tertiary lysosomes will be present over there where there will be undigested material so this active hydrolytic enzyme will be acting upon the undigested food it will throwing out that material from the cell to outside the cell right and this auto lysosomes will be acting when there will be parts of the cell inside the cell when there will be cell, some, some cell organelles which are damaged which are destroyed which are not like in good shape so what they will do this auto lysosome will open up itself and it will release its hydrolytic exam uh, hydrolytic uh, uh, enzymes into the cell and it acts as a suicidal bag the whole cell will be destroyed this is one function or it can engulf this mitochondria damaged my mitochondria inside the cell it will engulf and destroy it or either it will dissolve itself and the whole hydrolytic enzyme will distribute inside the cell again i am telling you lysosomes structures on the basis of structure there are four type of lysosome primary secondary tertiary auto lysosomes primary lysosome simple inactive hydrolytic enzyme so whenever lysosome will come to your mind hydrolytic enzyme should come with it on the basis of it active inactive digested indigest undigested and then this auto lysosomes are acting as societal in nature so these are basically auto and these are hetero hetero means that outside material they are engulfing or they are digesting the outside material and this auto lysosome is basically the material which is inside the cell it is uh, digesting that also lysosome contains hydrolytic enzyme and these enzymes are basically of six types no need to remember i am just telling you for example for protein there will be protease for uh, like a genetic material there will be i'll just show you see protease will be there nuclease will be there glycosides will be there so what are they doing they are just breaking the bond between proteins breaking the bond between dna rna breaking the bond between lipids esterase phosphatase sulfatase don't no need to remember guys no need to remember i hope this much is clear about lysosome a very simple keep it simple guys lysosome present in all eukaryotic cell except i have told you that except mature mammalian rbcs or protista or fungi they are not contained in lys this lysosome is not present in fungi so it is basically happening it is basically helpful lysosomes are helpful for intracellular digestion which is taking place i'll give you an example for example this is a cell and here some foreign food particles enter this is my foreign food particle there is a presence of lysosomes over here now this is a primary lysosome that means inactive hydrolytic enzyme it will get attached over here and this will become active now that that means secondary lysosome it will digest this food particle if digested then well and good if not digested then it will con convert to tertiary lysosome and it will this undigested food it will throw out the, out of the cell and fourth one is auto lysosomes are also present which basically destroy the whole cell or if there is any damaged part it will uh, destroy this damaged part also by digesting it i hope this much is clear so now you will understand also this gerl system guys gerl system why i was saying this gerl system golgi apparatus endoplasmic reticulum and lysosome now again see this is my again i'll draw the diagram of this nucleus i have told you that endoplasmic reticulum i'll draw the ribosomes will be present on the surface of it i have told you vesicles will be around it 
and these are containing proteins right suppose these are golgi apparatus over here like this I'm not drawing it more beautifully because it will take time. So this go, just try to understand. So this proteins basically, which are these these vesicles will be containing proteins, and these will go to Golgi apparatus, right? And this Golgi apparatus will basically secrete or make it more like uh, package it to where it is required, right? So these vesicles will be released to this Golgi apparatus. Now what will happen is these swollen end will become the large vacuoles, right? Which I've told you. Now these vacuoles, if they are having this hydrolytic enzyme, they will become lysosomes guys. So lysosome is basically created by Golgi apparatus and both endoplasmic reticulum. Because of this, these are connected GERL system. Now which I have told you that this, uh, phagocytosis will happen. Phagocytosis, cytosis, just see the spelling right phagocytosis will happen what if foreign particles will enter this lysosome this primary lysosome will act as secondary lysosome then tertiary lysosome and then autolysosome which i have told you everything will be more clear when you will complete all the classes just try to understand this much right now from here and nobody will ask you everything like 250 words will not be asked you about this lysosome it will be a two part question always remember this right now last part is a nucleus and nucleus we will cover it in greater detail when we will be studying genetic material in the third or fourth class of this particular unit only don't worry there will be, we will open up this whole nucleus right now just see the structure of nucleus that nucleus is having nuclear pore it is having nuclear envelope it is having one main thing that is nucleus around it nucleolus nucleolus and this chromatin present then the uh, the mat matrix which is present is known as nucleoplasm only this much you understand nucleus we will study in greater detail so leave a nucleus for now in third or fourth class when we will be studying starting genetic material we will be taking it in very deep right a nucleus is important so till now what all we have studied we have completed our cell types of cell structure and function part guys so let us draw the cell right what all we have studied so first of all we have tried to study my cell wall this is my cell wall cell wall and cell membrane after that, we try to understand mitochondria. And mitochondria is also two membrane bound. Plastids, right? <clears throat> Plastids were present in where? In the form of chloroplast it was present. In the middle one, we have studied this nucleus. Don't see like that. I'll show you the whole cell. It will take time otherwise let us just revise like this what all we have seen in this class and what you have to revise so we started with cell discovery and cell theory over here i have told you that only scientists are important guys now i hope you remember robert hook i hope you remember anthony van Leeuwenhoek. i hope you remember schleden I hope you remembered Sean, Robert Virchow, who gave this cell theory. Revise it again and see their contribution, guys. Nobody will ask you about this, but this will help you in the introduction part, wherever the need will be felt, right? You moved forward. We moved forward and tried to see the difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Also, while covering this whole classes you have seen that some parts are for example golgi apparatus for example this mitochondria uh, this particular endoplasmic reticulum lysosomes are only present in eukaryotes eukaryotes not prokaryotes so those things also pick from there and keep into the difference between this eukaryotes and prokaryotes i have told you the whole chart of this classification of Whittaker. you should remember that guys revise it again 
after moving forward we moved on to the cell part cell structure and function guys here we have started with seeing cell wall and cell wall we tried to see about middle lamella primary cell wall secondary cell wall what is important what they are made up of this structure is important what is the function you know the function now protection connection transportation intercellular uh, transportation then you try to understood the plasma membrane or cell membrane this cell membrane we studied various theory and one theory which was successful to explain this cell membrane was fluid mosaic here we studied three types of theories sandwich model also made up of what lipids plus proteins we moved forward and we tried to study mitochondria guys structure keep tap on structure and function structure automatically the structure will be coming to your mind which we try to draw again try to pause the video video and try to think what you all you have studied guys this video have become already long so i'm not stressing out that what all we have studied again and again right then we moved on to study plastids and here the most important part is chloroplast now these two will we will study in more detail and the questions are frequently asked upon this mitochondria and plastids only this we will study in respiration and photosynthesis under plant physiology part then we moved on to study what after plastids we try to see ribosomes very important now you are not confused between 70s and 80s function and structure larger subunit smaller subunit you are not confused now we try to study then endoplasmic reticular reticulum then golgi apparatus or golgi body and then lysosome nucleus will study in a very separate class in a separate class when we will studying uh, starting this genetic material right and in next class we will be seeing guys cell division and cell cycle this whole cell part will be over then about this cell and cell division cell cycle in next class we will be understanding mitosis and meiosis your job to understand read this information again and again nothing is very complicated the only thing which you will feel complicated is the words the words will be new to the non science student non bio student or who are studying it after a long time but this is not difficult guys if you will keep on revising it right if any you face any problem just connect with me okay take care guys i'll close the video now